Armstrong is on the moon, Captain, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. While not a household name, Eileen Galloway is famous to space historians as the woman most instrumental in NASA's creation more than 50 years ago. Called the Grand Dame of Space by friends and colleagues, Galloway researched and wrote numerous important congressional documents about space before the Soviets launched Sputnik in 1957. The Space Act she helped author was signed into law by President Eisenhower in July of the following year. Later in 1958, she helped then-Senator Lyndon Johnson with congressional hearings that led to the creation of NASA and America's entry into the space race. He asked me if I could help him with hearings that he wanted to hold on outer space to see whether or not the United States was prepared for this situation. And I said, yes, I would help him. The only thing I knew about outer space at that time was that the cow had jumped over the moon. In Concord, New Hampshire, two of that state's heroes, Krista McAuliffe and Alan Shepard, were remembered with a new education center bearing their names. And in San Diego, the USNS Wally Shira was christened. And finally, Walter Wally Shira Jr. was a U.S. Naval Academy graduate and former Navy test pilot who served in both World War II and the Korean War. Shira was an original seven Mercury astronaut. On October 3, 1962, he became the fifth American in space. He holds the distinction of being the only astronaut to fly in each of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo space programs. The actual launch of this newest of the Navy's underway replenishment ships was delayed by a few minutes when cold temperatures hardened the grease used to slide the vessel into the water. Veteran NASA astronauts in attendance who remember Shara fondly say the notorious practical joker would have been tickled by the glitch. I think Wally's hand was there at the back of the ship to keep it from going when everybody, uh, everybody thought it was going to start sliding away but eventually he let it go, and uh, I thought I heard a gotcha up there in the clouds. Education and inspiration. NASA continued its efforts to inspire our next generation of scientists and explorers. The code, this is Diamond. Is there proof that there is water on Mars? The key sportive upgrade is how часто будучи исследователем использующим международную космическую станцию сегодня. Comment est-ce que vous communiquez avec vos familles? How does water technology from life in space relate to providing cleaner water on Earth? That's a very good question. There's the Expedition 21 crew aboard the International Space Station assisted the Department of Education in touting International Education Week, November 16th through the 20th. What is being done by NASA to select more females and inspire young girls to consider careers in astrophysics or astronautics? There's more to what's going on here than, um, than the spaceflight missions themselves on orbit. If, if you look at uh, the ratios of women to men in mission control and on all of the ground teams, I think you'll find that uh, women are very well represented. There's many uh, outreach programs at uh, the middle school as well as the uh, high school and university levels that are encouraging young women to get into science and engineering. Students from the Washington area were able to question NASA astronauts Jeff Williams, Nicole Stott, and other crew members serving aboard the station. This is Kristen. How does pushing the boundaries of our capacity in space result in terrestrial benefits? And what are some examples? On the ground, they met and asked questions of astronauts Don Thomas and STS-128 crew members Patrick Forrester, Jose Hernandez, and Christopher Fugelsang. We are reading you five by five. I hope that means well. That means good. <laughs> Thanks so much. This is an absolute thrill for us. and we have Also in attendance were Education Secretary Arnie Duncan and NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden. International Education Week and events allow NASA, Department of Education, and education communities to collaborate to inspire the next generation of the country's scientists, engineers, and explorers. Okay, enough talk. International Education Week celebrates international education and exchange programs worldwide. 
helping prepare Americans for a global environment and attracting future leaders from abroad to study here in the United States. Students at Texas Southern University in Houston deliberately spread germs around the globe. As part of a study of how microbes grow in microgravity, the school's Center for Bio-Nanotechnology and Environmental Research sent samples of E. coli and B. subtilis bacteria into orbit aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis to evaluate any changes these substances might undergo. The experiment allowed students to design, monitor, and execute the study in laboratories, as well as near real-time on the Space Shuttle. We work with microorganisms and we're going to study the effects that microgravity has on the microorganisms in space. I really enjoyed this experiment because usually with science we're always reading in textbooks, always studying and always taking tests, but for once we actually got to have a hands-on scientific experience. Through its mentoring programs, partnerships with educators, engagement with the public, and special organizations, NASA promotes the importance and fun of learning. We'll never know everything there is to know, but with our burning curiosity, we have learned so much. And with that, we conclude this year at NASA. Happy holidays and Happy New Year to you and yours.